ChatGPT just got a major upgrade. Now, I've had the chance to test it out for a full week, and you've probably seen other videos on YouTube talking about the new features. So, so this video is not just about the new features, but instead, I'm gonna show you seven practical examples on how you can use GPT-5 to grow your business. Because most people are asking it to write emails or brainstorm ideas. I mean, that's cute. But it can do way more than that. It can design products, it can build marketing systems, and even automate the work that you usually pay thousands of dollars for somebody to do. And you know, the 20 bucks that I pay every month month has given me the biggest ROI in my business. But before we get to the use cases, I want to really quickly summarize three of the biggest updates that GPT-5 got. So number one, remember you used to have to switch between models, right? Depending on what you're trying to do, you got O3 mini, 4.0, O3. It's pretty confusing, right? But now everything is integrated into GPT-5 and it will decide for you whether it needs more time to think or not. And number two, it hallucinates less. So it means that the answers that it gives you will be more accurate and more reliable. And it also has better writing, which means that that it apparently writes more like a human now. But one thing that I wonder, you know, if it still gives you those am dashes. But anyway, let's dive into the first use case here, which is creating digital products. Now, I know many of you sell digital products, but you know, sometimes you run out of ideas or maybe you have an idea, but you don't know how to create it. So I'm gonna show you how to solve both problems today. Now, I was doing a bit of research on Etsy over the weekend, and I found this product that is actually killing it. And it's actually a children's book. And you can see here, it's making $17,000 a month. Not lifetime, but every single month. And I'm using Etsy to show this to you guys because it is the largest marketplace for digital products and print-on-demand products. And you know, believe it or not, this book is actually a print-on-demand product. Now, I'm not going to get into the strategy of, you know, how to sell the product or what print-on-demand provider to use for this one. But if you guys want to deep dive on this product, well, let me know in the comments if you want to see that in a separate video. But in this video, I really want to focus on how to create this product from A to Z. And I want to show you that you can use GPT-5 to build the entire book, including the storyline and the illustrations. So here's the prompt that I use. You're an expert children's books author. Create a 30-page storyline for a children's picture book for ages three and four, right? So I'm just going to skim through the prompt here. You know, story should be sweet, magical, and easy for parents to read. Um, each page should have one to two short sentences, uh, gentle rhythm, complete journey from beginning, middle, and end. And to give it more context in terms of design, I took a screenshot of this book that is popular and I just uploaded this to ChatGPT to give it more context of what I want in terms of design. And this is the cover that it was able to come up with. I mean, look at the detail. It has the, all the title and the author's name and it has the age. And you can ask it to generate this cover without a text. I find that it's easier to just add the text later on Canva and also gave me the full storyline. So you can read it through if you like it, you can make changes can add more characters, things like this. And here's a sample of the first page that it created, complete with the illustration and the text written on it. Right, I think this is pretty amazing. And the fact that you can create both the story and the illustration of ChatGPT is just mind blowing to me. And this means that you don't need another subscription to, or another design tool because you can do everything here on ChatGPT. Now, by the way, I'm gonna be showing you many different prompts throughout this video. And to make it easier for you guys, I put everything together in this Notion document so you don't have to keep pausing the video and take screenshots. So if you want a copy of all the prompts here, you can just click the link in the show notes below. Now, before we jump into the next use case, a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Gling AI. So Gling is an AI video editor that saves me hours of editing and is actually the same tool that I use to edit this video that you're watching right now. Editing all this used to take forever. You know, I'd spend hours just cutting out all the mistakes and finding the best takes. But with Gling, it automatically handles everything for me. So every time I finish filming, I simply drag my video file into Gling and select what I want it to clean up. Pauses, filler words, mistakes, whatever I need, right? Within seconds, the AI cleans up my video. And my favorite feature about Gling is that when I repeat a sentence multiple times, Gling actually recognizes this pattern and keeps only the best take. It knows which version sound the most natural. And another feature that I love about Gling is the ability to edit on the transcript itself. I think it's a lot easier than editing on the timeline. If I don't like something that I said, I just highlight it, cross it out, and it's removed from my video. And you can even adjust the pacing of your entire video with a simple slider here. You want tighter, faster cuts for more energy, or you prefer a more relaxed pace with natural pauses, you can all adjust it here. This is an easy recommendation for me because I use this tool every single week for my videos, and it saved me literally hours of editing time that I can now spend on research and creating better content for you guys. All right, so Gling AI is about 10 bucks a month, which is honestly a great price for the time it saves. But if you use my link to sign up, enter the code Jason, and you'll get an extra $10 off any of their plans. Thanks again, Gling AI, and now back to the video. Now, the second use case is to increase sales. Now, one of the biggest updates for GPT-5 is the improvement in reasoning. 
And I think the reasoning is super important if you're asking ChatGPT to do any kind of analysis. So for example, I have this old landing page of mine that I used to sell my own products that I created years ago. Uh, I don't use this anymore, but let's say that I want to improve this page. What can I add? What can I remove to improve conversions on this page? So I give it a prompt and I just simply write the URL here and without giving it any screenshots, right? And it's able to crawl that page and analyze each element and give me a full breakdown of what I'm missing and what I can improve on, right? And after going through all this, you know, I find that it doesn't just give me something broad or vague, but it is quite specific and it also gives you the logic why it's making that suggestion, which is really good. So I think this is gonna be super useful for you guys if you have your own products. If you sell on a marketplace like Etsy, you can even ask it to improve product descriptions, titles. You will think of angles that you normally wouldn't think about, right? Or if you provide a service for another business, let's say you're a website designer or you're a copywriter, I think having this skill is a plus and it makes you stand out, right? So you're not just designing or you're not just writing stuff, but you're actually doing that to improve the sales for the business. So here's another use case for ChatGPT that I think you're gonna find super useful. Custom GPTs. Now, custom GPT is not new in itself, but what's new is the way that we can use it to improve our business and potentially make more money. So I'm gonna give you an example here. So let's say you're running a business and you have someone that you admire online and you always look up to this person for business advice. And let's say it's Alex Formosi. And obviously for most people, they don't have access to him to personally ask questions. So what we're gonna do here is create a custom GPT called Hormozy GPT. So instead of having to ask ChatGPT every single time, giving it more context, hey, according to Alex Hormozy, what should I do? In this scenario instead of doing that you want to build a custom gpt around him so that way anytime i have a question about business my offer my pricing i can go straight to hormozy gpt and skip all the long explanations now i'm going to show you the few steps that i took to create this alex hormozy and i want to share with you my logic behind this now step number one i want to ask chat gpt to collect everything about hormozy's beliefs strategies techniques and you can see here that i told it to create a 100 page document with all its ideas his pricing strategies, his marketing approaches, his frameworks, everything from his books, everything that you can find from the podcast that's done. Now, this took ChatGPT around 20, 30 minutes to prepare, but it's just a one-time setup. And what it did is it put everything into a text file that I can easily upload to the custom GPT. Now, step number two, once I have that text file, I went to the left sidebar in ChatGPT here, and under GPTs, you wanna create a custom GPT. Right? And then you just simply upload that text document here, you save it, and then you just name the custom GPT or Mosey GPT. Now, I actually tested this out because I was planning to create a new digital product for myself. Now, I can ask it something like, hey, I want to create a coaching program. How much should I price it? And should I run ads? Should I create a community around it? And looking at the answers, it actually gives me a very detailed advice the way that Alex Hormozzi would always approach it, you know, without having me to re-explain the context every single time. Now, what's new with GPT-5 is that you can now use enhanced voice mode with this custom GPTs. And I think this is one of my favorite features. So instead of writing a prompt to this Hormozzi GPT, I can have a conversation with him. And I think this is a really nice update because it's always nice to have a conversation with a person instead of writing back and forth and waiting for the answers, right? And you know, you can do this with anybody you admire as long as that person has put out a lot of content online and you know Alex Hormozzi works great because he's been everywhere for years and there's so much data to pull from. Now let's get to the next use case. Now GPT-5 agents just got a big research update as well and this is where it gets very powerful if you're doing research. I want to show you a real use case if you're content creators and this is to help plan out your video topics on YouTube. So let's say I want to start a new channel in the personal finance niche and I want to know what videos to create based on what's proven to work on YouTube. So instead of manually browsing on YouTube, I want the GPT agent to do some basic research and maybe it can find help me some winners before I even spend my time on this. So I'm going to go through this the prompt that I have. So I have the objective here, you know, to research personal finance creators. Now notice that I don't just say, hey, find personal finance creators because that's too broad. Instead, I gave it specific creators, which is what we call seed creators here, which are basically the big established channels in that need. So the agent is going to use these creators as the benchmark for the research. Now, I also wanted to search for smaller channels and I want to avoid, you know, faceless channels, you know, stock footage or, you know, AI channels. And the moment I hit generate, it's actually going to perform the test. So you can see on live what it's actually doing here. It's actually going to YouTube and it's going to search for these keywords, these creators, and you can see every single thing that it's doing. And you can hit the activity here and you can just follow what it's doing, right? Now, obviously this can take a bit of time. So this particular activity took me about 15 minutes. So I would suggest just leave it and come back in 15 minutes. And once it's ready with the data, you know, it gave me like this creator table with subscribers count. You can see the views. 
You can even see the upload frequency of this creator. Uh, some examples of outperforming videos for this channel even give you 10, 15 fresh video ideas, each with the original link to the video and give you a reason why it's working now and even give you some suggested titles here. So I think this is super useful when you're doing research, but I find that it's even more useful if you are more specific with your prompt. For example, don't just say, hey, what should I create a video about in personal finance? That is very broad, but instead you wanna ask more specific questions like, hey, analyze these three channels and find out the best videos with the most views in the last three months. Or you can ask it to, hey, study this video. You can read the comments, you know, find what people like and don't like about the video. So the more specific your parameters are and the more boundaries that you set for the agent, the better the output's gonna be. All right, so the next one is about writing style. So GPT-5 is now apparently better at writing as well. So I use GPT-4 for a long time and whenever I ask it to write something and it just feels like AI, right? Especially with the M dashes. I mean, that's a dead giveaway that is chat GPT generated. And you know, the structure of the writing is too perfect. The sentence structure, they all sound the same and you can immediately tell that it was chat GPT. Now I tried GPT-5 for a few days and I feel that it's different. I think that the writing flow is a lot better. It has more rhythm, right? It actually sounds like a person having a chat with another person over coffee. Now, I personally use Claude a lot for my scripts, my newsletters. It sounds more human, but honestly, in my short time with this GPT-5, I'm starting to think, you know, if it's actually good enough and usable, I might just cancel my Claude subscription. You know, one less app to pay for. And what I like about GPT-5 is it actually knows how to adapt your writing for different platforms. So you can say something like, hey, write me a Twitter thread on this topic here and it will reformat your writing specifically for that platform. Or if you want this to be on Instagram, it will actually rewrite the text, break up all the text into slides, put in some curiosity so people will actually swipe to read the next slide and the next slide. Now, I wanna spend more time writing with GPT-5 because it's only been out for a week, but it does look very promising so far. Now, the next update that I like here is reduced psychopathy. So I feel like this is one of the bigger improvements in GPT-5 because have you guys ever noticed that every time you ask ChatGPT a question, it always tends to agree with you, right? And this thing is called psychopathy and it's super annoying, right? Because if you're asking it for feedback on a strategy or a question that you're unsure about, you can't really tell if your idea is really good or bad or you know, if ChatGPT is just trying to make you happy. Now, apparently GPT-5 has fixed that issue. You know, I tried this and I, th I feel like it's now willing to challenge your ideas more rather than just agreeing with everything that you say. And this other big one is reducing hallucinations. Because last month I was asking it to provide, you know, five examples of mobile apps that's making $10,000 a month. And it gives you everything. But when I actually check the sources, the last two examples were not actually true or valid. You know, it either gives you the wrong URL or the app just doesn't exist. So GPT-5 has apparently improved on this as well. It's claiming that it's 65% less likely to hallucinate compared with other models like O3. And in my short time, I haven't found any errors yet, but I mean, it's good that they're really addressing these issues and making the experience better for us. But let me know in the comments, what is the best feature of ChatGPT that you guys enjoy using? Or what is the one thing that you wish they'll fix in the future? And by the way, if you want more hacks on how to use ChatGPT, I recently did a video on 10 ways that you can use ChatGPT that most people don't know about. So if you want to watch that video click here to watch that and i'll see you guys there